Welcome to Logic Medical. Today's interesting topic is cross section of the spinal cord at mid thoracic level. So, first coming into the grey matter, we have the ventral grey horn which is long and slender but it doesn't touch the surface of the spinal cord. Whereas the dorsal grey horn is long, slender and touching the surface of the spinal cord. The ventral grey horn is motor, whereas the dorsal grey horn is sensory, meaning the dorsal grey horn receives the information and the ventral grey horn sends the information to the spinal cord. In addition, we have an extra grey matter called the lateral grey horn from T1 to L1 segment of the spinal cord. This is the preganglionic sympathetic nervous system. Kindly note. The sympathetic nervous system is a nervous system of fear, fright, flight, fight, whatever starts from all this. Sympathetic nervous system is there throughout the body, but it is controlled by T1 to L1 segment of the spinal cord. So, these pre ganglionic neurons controlling the sympathetic nervous system are present in the lateral grey horn of the spinal cord. So this is about the grey matter, this is the central canal present within the grey matter of the spinal cord, where the CSF travels. Come on to the white matter, before going to the white matter, we will divide the white matter into various parts. This is the anterior median fissure, this is the depth of the anterior median fissure. This is the posterior median sulcus. Here we have a septa called as posterior median septa. So here is the posterior lateral sulcus. And here is the anterior lateral sulcus. Through the anterior lateral sulcus emerges the ventral root of spinal nerve. Through the posterior lateral sulcus emerges the dorsal root of spinal nerve. So this is the outline. So between the ventral grey horns, these two ventral grey horns, the white matter or the white column is called as anterior white funiculus or the anterior white column. Between the dorsal grey horns or the grey columns, we have the posterior white funiculus or the posterior white column. Between the ventral and dorsal we have the between the ventral and dorsal grey horns. In the lateral aspect we have the lateral white column. So these are called columns because these are bundle of myelinated axons running throughout the length of spinal cords. They will be running in two directions. One they will be going upwards towards the brain, therefore they are called as ascending tracts or else from the brain the tract may be, the axons may be descending down like this. When they are descending down, obviously we can call it as descending tract. So obviously the descending tracts are motor in function, whereas ascending tracts are sensory in function. So, the ascending tracts ultimately end in this part, area number 3, 1, 2 of the parietal lobe, which is the sensory cortex. Exception, the cerebellar tract, the ventral and dorsal spinocerebellar tract ends in the cerebellum, the little brain, which is present behind the brain stem, so this is the cerebellum. Whereas motor tracts, they begin from cerebral cortex from the area number 4. It's a primary motor cortex, the precentral gyrus, area number 4. It begins from there. Okay. So let us summarize the tracts and their function in single line. Ascending tracts, the vesiculus gracilis, which carries tactile localization, tactile discrimination, the stereognosis, the position sense, Graphisthesia from the lower half of the body, the lower limbs and the lower half of the body. The same sensations will be carried in the upper half of the body and the upper limbs by fasciculus cuneatus. Together, they both of them are called as posterior column tract because they are present in the posterior column, the spinal cord. I already told that in the beginning. Fasciculus gracilis is also called as tract of gall. Fasciculus cuneatus is also called as tract of burdock. 
The ventral and dorsal spinocerebral tract, as the name suggests, they are present on the anterior aspect and posterior aspect of the lateral white column. Okay. They are beginning from spinal cord and ending in the cerebellum, therefore called spinocerebral tract. They carry subconscious kinesthetic sensation. That is, even more subconsciousness. You are about to fall from the edge of the cord. You hold on to something. That is because of thanks to the spinocerebral tracts. You go to the next. The spinothalamic tracts. There are two in number. The lateral spinothalamic tract and the, sorry for it, the anterior spinothalamic tract. The anterior spinothalamic tract carries the sensation of cool touch and pressure. Whereas the lateral spinothalamic tract carries the sensation of pain and temperature. Anterior spinothalamic tract, cool touch and pressure. So these are the ascending tracts and sensations carried by them. Moving on to the descending tracts. These are the tracks are already stated. It begins from the precentral virus from the area number 4 in the frontal lobe and the descend down and control different parts of the spinal cord. The major tract in this, which begins from the pyramidal neuron, are called the pyramidal tract, also called the lateral spinothalamic tract. Majority of the fibers cross in the middle of oblong tract to remain in the lateral white funiculus as the lateral spinothalamic tract. Minority of them remain uncrossed and forms the anterior spinothalamic or the ventral corticospinal tract. It is corticospinal, sorry. So, majority of them will cross to form the lateral corticospinal and minority of them don't cross 10 to 20 percent fibers and they form the anterior corticospinal tract. So, together they are called as pyramidal tracts. They begin from pyramidal shaped neurons in the cerebral cortex. Other than pyramidal tract, all the other tracts also control the ventral grey horn of the spinal cord. These neurons of the spinal cord are called as extra pyramidal tract. Not because, because it is extra, it is other than pyramidal tract because it is a Greek and Latin word. The extra pyramidal tracts are from the red nucleus of the midbrain, rubrospinal tract, from the reticular formation of the Brain stem that is midbrain, pons, medulla oblongata, it is called lateral reticulospinal and ventral reticulospinal because this is present in the anterior aspect and this is present in the lateral aspect. Then from the vestibular nucleus of the pontum medullary junction, we have the vestibulospinal tract from the tectum of the midbrain that is from the superior and inferior colliculus of the midbrain that is involved in a reflex movement of the head and neck with respect to visual input superior colliculus and uh, reflex movement of the head and neck with respect to auditory input, inferior particles. Together this inferior, superior and inferior particles together they are called as tectum. So beginning from the tectum we have the tectospinal tract controlling the spinal cord. Involved in reflex movement of the head and neck with respect to visual input and the auditory input. Maybe the visual input, superior particles, inferior particles, auditory input. So to summarize, the ascending tracts are fasciculus gracilis, fasciculus cuneatus, dorsal and ventral spinocerebral tracts, lateral spinothalamic tract, ventral spinothalamic tract. The descending tracts include mainly the pyramidal tract being in the frontal lobe area number 4. The pyramidal tract will be placed on two places, in the lateral side of the spinal cord or the anterior side of the spinal cord. And controls the ventral grey horn neurons. So therefore, the pyramidal tracts can also be called as corticospinal tract. They begin from cerebral cortex. So corticospinal tract. Other than this pyramidal tract, the other tracts, descending tracts, are named as extra pyramidal tract because they are additional supporting tracts other than pyramidal tract controlling the same ventral grey horn neurons. They are the rubrospinal tract from the red nucleus, the reticulospinal tract from the reticular formation. From the vestibular nucleus, we have the vestibular spinal tract. From the tectum of the midbrain, we have the tectospinal tract for visual and auditory reflexes. Thank you for watching and learning from Logic Medical. If you are new to our channel, kindly consider subscribing and don't forget to press the bell icon. And don't forget to like this video and share this video with your friends too. Thank you.
Now we'll do my 